Hello, welcome to CS320. Uh, today I'm going to be going over some logistics for the course um, and kind of giving you an idea of what we'll be learning this semester. Um, and then uh, at the end, I'm actually going to get into some actual content. Um, so hopefully you've all taken Data Programming 1. I know there's some exceptions there. And Data Programming 1 used to be numbered 301 or 220. Um, both of these courses are really kind of a foundation for the new data science major, uh, but I know it applies to a lot of other people too. Um, if anybody's interested in the data science major, I have a link for that up at, at the top. Um, so I'm just trying to compare and contrast this course with the previous uh, one, CS220. Um, in that one, we were kind of learning the basics of coding. We wanted to get uh, uh, results and, and hopefully correct results. Um, now we're going to be having higher standards. We want to, in addition to getting results, we want to make sure they're reproducible. Other people who run our code are going to see the same thing. Uh, we're going to want our code to be fast. As data sets get bigger and bigger, that becomes more and more of a concern. Um, in 2.20, we learned about objects and references, and, and maybe I have two variables referencing the same object. Maybe that object is a list or a dictionary. Uh, in this class, we're going to be inventing new types of objects that we'll be defining ourselves. And so what that means is that we're, we're just defining uh, functions in 2.20, now we're actually going to be defining methods. Um, I can say object.f and then parentheses, and I'm going to be the one defining f. We never did that in 320. Uh, we learned some basic types in 220, like lists and dictionaries. Now we're going to use our new power to create new types, to create uh, complex structures like graphs and trees. And um, that's going to help us, for instance, reason about how we could uh, use the internet. The internet is a big graph of web pages, for example. Uh, in 220, we were strictly uh, just given data sets and then analyze them. Now we're going to actually look at cases where we can build our own data sets from scratch, either by kind of collecting data on the web or by maybe taking some measurements. Um, we're going to make our plotting and visualization more advanced. We're going to do things like geographic maps and animations. Um, and then at the end of the semester, instead of kind of doing straightforward analysis on tables, we're going to do some simple machine learning. Can we predict some columns in a table um, from the other columns. So this is a great way to build on that previous course. Um, if it's been a while since you took that course and, and want to review, uh, I have a link at the bottom of this page. Um, in that uh, semester, I recorded all my videos. So you can go back and, and kind of review anything that you're rusty in. So that was an introduction for the course. Uh, let me introduce myself briefly. Um, my name is Tyler Carraza Harder. Um, you should just call me Tyler. Uh, I'm a longtime Badger. I was an undergrad here myself and did grad school here. Um, I, I've worked a little bit in industry. Uh, primarily, I was at Microsoft uh, for a while before coming back um, to teach. And I was working on, on cloud computing and, and particularly SQL Server. Um, I've done other internships. I'm always happy to talk about uh, internships with people if you're kind of applying for them. Um, you know, I've worked at Google, Facebook, and some other places. Uh, aside from teaching, I have a, a couple interests. One is I'm interested in civic hacking. How can we write code? that uh, kind of benefits uh, government, in particular local government. Um, so sometimes I get students involved uh, with this. So for example, Megan on, on the left was uh, uh, working on this and she was kind of proposing new bus routes in the city of Madison. So if that kind of thing interests you, definitely talk to me. Um, I'm also interested in building uh, new cloud frameworks um, or basically running Python code. So I've been involved in this project, Open Lambda. I'm happy to talk about that too, if anybody is interested and has kind of taken some more um, upper level uh, CS courses, although I know that's not the most common background uh, in, in 320. Um, so I want to get all, to know all of you too. I think that's a little bit harder um, given that the course is online this semester. Um, I hope people will drop in office hours and introduce themselves. Uh, but to kind of get a sense of who all in the class, you know, like what year in school you are, what you're studying, what you've taken before, um, I want everybody to fill out this form. So that'll help me a lot. And then also I'm going to give some participation credit uh, for that. So I'll be sharing that link at the end too. So let's talk a little bit about the logistics for the course. Um, a lot of this I've been rethinking in light of COVID, right? This wasn't originally meant to be an online course and uh, I want to make it as good as possible. And, and I think the main thing I'm worried about is that normally students are learning from each other and making new friends in this class and that's harder now. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be randomly assigning everybody to um, a team and a team is going to have four to seven students and that team is going to last the whole semester, so you're going to at least get to know a few people in this class well. And to um, facilitate that, I'm going to make lots of different kinds of collaboration 
um, allowed with the in the team. I mean, there's still some rules, and I'm going to be getting into that later. Uh, but um, you know, there's ways you can collaborate on projects and even even quizzes for this course. Um, now, in contrast, people who are not on your team, you know, maybe you have friends on the course. Uh, the rules around collaborating with them is pretty strict, right? Maybe there's some exceptions that I'll um, outline later, but uh, for the most part, you're going to be working with your randomly assigned team this semester. Um, now, so we have different types of staff. Uh, there's an instructor, which is me, uh, where I have a few teaching assistants, and uh, and then where I have six people um, who are mentors who uh, recently took this course themselves and did well, and they want to help others um, learn. Um, all three of uh, these you know, different types of people, the course will be providing office hours, and you can intend any of those you prefer. Um, now, given that we have about 10 people who are staff, I also want you to connect with some individuals. And so uh, there are going to be uh, you know, teaching assistants and mentors that will have some special roles in the course. And so some vocabulary for that, we're going to have one of our TAs designated as the head TA. And, um, and she's going to be in charge of projects, right? So um, if you think there's a mistake on the project or, uh, or you think the tests are wrong or, or that kind of thing, um, she's going to be the one to contact. I'll be sharing that information um, later. And uh, also we're going to have a team TA. So you're going to have one TA dedicated to your team uh, throughout the whole semester. And that's kind of your go-to contact person if you just need to send an email um, so, so you can get to know that person better. Um, now, if you're in office hours, of course, you can go to any TA, right? They don't have to be your team TA. Um, and then finally, in terms of grading, and reviewing projects, that's trying to just rotate on a weekly basis, right? So you can kind of get feedback um, from a number of different graduate uh, TAs. Um, for the mentors, like I said, you can go to any of their office hours, but we're also gonna assign each team a semester long mentor who will meet with you on a weekly basis and uh, will meet with you, meaning the team as a whole on a weekly basis. And so you can think after each lecture about questions you have or kind of project issues and talk about those with your team and then prepare for that time with the mentor so that you uh, have all these questions ready. Um, so I use an external course website a lot. Maybe I'll just click it now, actually. Um, so this is the website and, uh, and I have the schedule here and uh, syllabus and a lot of good stuff. So you should use that. Um, I am maybe using Canvas, but maybe a little less, more, less so than uh, a lot of people might use it. Um, I'm going to use Canvas for a few things. Um, I'm going to use it for general announcements. I, I prefer that over email. Uh, there's going to be these weekly quizzes on Canvas that you can do. Um, you can uh, use it to keep track of your progress, right? So I'm going to be posting things that you need to do um, in Canvas, and then when you're done, you can click this Mark is Done button. Um, that will help you keep track and also help me keep track of, of where people are and if anybody's falling behind. And then I may be posting grade summaries there. Um, now that first site I mentioned is where we're actually give you detailed written feedback. So you should use that heavily. But if you're just trying to see where you stand in the course, then, then Canvas will be the place. Um, other communication, I already kind of talked about the announcements. Um, where I have a Piazza, uh, there will be a link to that from, from my site. Um, don't paste more than five lines of project-related code. That's considered um, uh, academic misconduct in this class. Uh, we're also going to be uh, posting office hours to Piazza for me, the TAs in the mentor, so, so check that. Um, on the website where I have all these Google Forms that you can fill out, I've already mentioned one of those, which is the introductory form. Um, there's maybe a form for anonymous feedback. So uh, you, know, you should also feel comfortable just trying to directly email me and tell me if there's things bothering you in the course, but if you prefer to be anonymous, uh, that's how. Uh, like I said, we have lots of TAs and mentors for this course, and so if anybody's really doing an outstanding job, um, you can fill out a, a form that basically thanks them and kind of say what you liked about how they have been helping you. And, um, and that's good for me to know to kind of see who's really doing a great job helping students, and it's very motivating for them to hear that feedback, of course. Um, other contact, you can always just drop me an email. I have my email address up here. Uh, or, uh, you know, there's going to be this other page where you can email the TAs. A little bit about course etiquette. So for these office hours, you just drop in. There's no need to communicate with us in advance. Just show up and, and come with your questions. Um, some people in the past have felt they needed to email before you don't. Um, if you want to have an individual meeting that's maybe a little bit longer, um, drop me an email and I'm happy to set that up. Uh, when you are emailing, it's helpful, especially about like a project question, it's helpful if you email from your at wisc.edu uh, because that has your net ID in it. And then from that, I can kind of figure out who you are more quickly. Um, 
if you email me from something else, like a Gmail, just uh, include your net ID in it so I know exactly who you are. Um, uh, try not to start multiple email threads if the topic is the same. Uh, we get a lot of emails and that kind of leads to confusion on our end. Um, we'll try to be responsive this semester, which usually means um, you know, give us 48 hours to get back to you. Um, we'll try to be faster, but sometimes the emails pile up and, and we get a little bit behind. So uh, uh, we appreciate your patience with that. Um, you know, use your judgment about whether to email me or your TA first. Um, uh, it's kind of up to you. It definitely takes more load off of me if some of the emails and answering questions is distributed across um, the TAs, in particular your team TAs. Um, and then finally, right, I mean, you should e email us if you want to, but if it seems like it's a general question, uh, consider using uh, Piazza, right, because maybe it'll help other people in the class as well. All right, let's talk a little bit about grading. So the way it's going to work is that at the end of the semester, you're going to have a score between 0 and 100, and then I'm going to set a curve. And I'm not sure what the curve looks like yet because this is a drastically new format um, for the course uh, to kind of accommodate uh, COVID. Um, so there's going to be four parts to graded work. There's going to be seven projects, each worth 8%. So that's the most important thing. Um, in the previous course, most of these uh, projects were notebooks. Um, some will be this semester, but we're also going to have you be writing Python modules and Python programs. Um, in your projects, there's going to be two parts. There's going to be the first part where you can basically collaborate with your team in any way, and uh, then a smaller second part that you have to do individually. Right, so everybody will turn in their own uh, notebook or .py file at the end. And so for that second part, you should only be getting help from 320 staff. Um, there's going to be a test.py like in, in the previous course. Um, it won't tell you as much as it did before, in part because you're going to be making more plots, and that's hard to auto-grade. Like often a TA has to look at a plot and see if you did the right thing. Um, when you submit, you should ask for specific feedback if you're interested in. I think constructive feedback is a priority in this class because that's really how you become a better programmer. Um, these quizzes are, are going to be short, 2% uh, um, each. It's going to be a, a, after each week, just, just trying to make sure you're um, you know, watching the lectures and absorbing the content. So hopefully it's, it's a little pressure. Uh, there's going to be a deadline, but you are welcome to take it sooner if you like. Um, this will be on Canvas. It can be open book and notes. Um, for the most part, you should be doing these alone. Uh, with one big exception. If there are other people on your assigned team who want to take it at the same time, uh, you can take it together and discuss answers. What I don't want to have happen is to have a team member complete it and then kind of make notes and then pass that on to somebody else. But I, I like if people are kind of on the same team or discussing as they go through the quiz. Um, there's going to be a final, which is not like a real final. It's more like an open-ended project that's short and on a topic of your choosing. Um, you're going to have to write a little bit about your results as well. So you could almost think of it more as like a combination paper um, analysis. Um, hopefully it's not uh, uh, too much work compared to a regular project. Um, I'll, I'll have more details on the constraints for that when it gets a little closer. Um, and then finally, participation is 6% of the grade. And that, that includes things like, um, you know, filling out the survey that I ask you to or um, interacting in discussions and, and various other things, just kind of uh, being engaged in the course. Um, let me talk a little bit about academic misconduct. Uh, um, actually, last uh, last semester I kind of had this scary slide at the start of it, and then very few people um, cheated, which is great. So hopefully it has the same effect uh, this semester. Um, last fall, one year ago, um, you know, I had to report over thirty people uh, cheating, which is pretty discouraging. So so make sure you understand the rules, what is allowed and, and what's not. Uh, kind of the most common cheating, as you can see here, is on on projects. Um, they're really good tools that help us uh, catch that. Um, so uh, when I talk to people who have cheated, it's not usually that they're trying to you know, game the system so much that they uh, fell behind in the course and then started feeling desperate. So if you are feeling behind or overwhelmed, especially since I know this is a, is a weird semester for all of us, um, just let me know. I'm happy to talk and, and hopefully find a way to get back on, on track. So hopefully you never feel desperate and that you have to uh, kind of do unethical things to succeed. Uh, the reading will be similar to the previous course where I have these two books that you have probably um, already have some familiarity with. Um, there's going to be some other notes and online resources, um, and I'll just let you know about that as, as we go. Um, so maybe you have some questions, you can feel free to drop an email, um, or better if it's general, just post to Piazza, and, uh, and we'll kind of uh, answer those the best we can.